Hello everyone, welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. Today we're going to be looking at a piece by the artist Brian Jones. And this piece gives a bunch of different lessons. We're going to focus on center emphasis, we're going to focus on contrast, we're going to focus on inspiration from some other artists, and then we're also kind of going to focus on uh, symbolism and how that really plays into it. So let's jump right into it. So right in, in our initial introduction, we're met with this massive glow of this kind of center obelisk or center prism here. And that really, it commands the center sp region of the spatial composition. So first off, it, it emphasizes itself by nature of its center placement. It also emphasizes itself with this, of course, light on dark contrast. And this light is also reflected here on this kind of water, water surface as well. So that gives a unique texture, but it also gives a unique translation of the form and of course of the light contrast there as well so it really it kind of denotes this this center lane here that really emphasizes it and it draws our attention to it directly every single time so it, it appears that we have a lone subject here and this is kind of the moment of discovery right our lone subject stops here to take a look and it seems like our subject is wearing some type of kind of high-tech suit to be able to traverse this what appears to be kind of like a cave-esque landscape. So really rugged terrain and had to go through that rugged and difficult terrain in order to find this in the first place. So the, the discovery here is a really important aspect of it. We see he's just kind of staring at it, taking it all in, and just kind of maybe even trying to understand what exactly this is as well. And the obelisk, so I'm not sure if we can technically call this an obelisk. It's definitely a glowing prism, or it's a very large prism. Normally, obelisks have kind of a, you know, they kind of come to a point. This one, of course, does not. It is more so just the prism. But I think that's important to note. The obelisk was, in Egypt, for example, it was seen as kind of like an embodied form of rebirth. And, of course, there are different levels to the obelisk, but... Just wanted to mention that real quick. I'm not sure if we can directly call this an obelisk, but it, it is a very kind of divine, spiritual, or higher order prism here. So we have this, what appears to be kind of partially a temple. We, of course, have that there. And we have these series of steps which go up as well. There are also these four podium-esque type of objects there as well. And this feels, of course, it's not perfectly symmetrical, but it is very, very close. And that's, I think that's important to note as well. That gives us a sense of harmony and a sense of visual rhythm, which is consistent and really just harmonious and balanced at the end of the day there. So we have what, I think we can call this a lone hero. So the lone hero is kind of traversing through those really difficult times, traversing through those really difficult travels in order to find the oasis or to find the temple or to find just the kind of crystal, you know. It is, it is looking through the really dark times in order to find that reward or find that higher state of being or even the, the keys of knowledge which result from the tumultuous or difficult experiences in life. So I think that's really important to note. So we can see the cave as both a metaphorical and a literal symbol of hardship. Whenever you move through hardships in life with, with your eyes open, you will discover kind of the keys of knowledge or, or, and you can give those through experience. You can give the keys of knowledge to others who necessarily haven't gone through that experience. Think of like an autobiography. The things that you go through through your life gives you an incredible amount of perspective and you can give that perspective to other people, but you wouldn't have those keys of knowledge unless you went through that, through the difficult times in the first place. So I think that's really important to note. And I really see this here. Who knows how long this subject has been traveling, but it appears that the subject has finally reached the goal or finally reached that higher ideal or even the keys of knowledge themselves. And it, and of course, is gifted with such a divine and such an important and impactful scene which stands before us. At first, I thought this was a digital illustration, but with some discussions with the artist, it is actually a three-dimensional rendering. So that's really important to note. It really has this cartoon feel, but it's still within the, the three-dimensional rendering. So I think that's really fascinating and also incredible as well. I also wanted to just note real quick, you see there appears to be some type of flat platform before it picks up the stairs once more. Kind of like go up and up. So I think that's important to know. Just a, a bit of separation, but nothing too crazy there. 
And we see this prism is kind of held up, kind of held up by this rock formation that has the base. And it's not just kind of free floating, it's not just free standing, but it is connected. And it is synonymous with this kind of uh, surrounding rock or cave environment. So I think that's also really important to note whenever I take a look at this piece. You know, this glow gives this high sense of divinity or at least a high sense of rarity or importance. So whenever you're taking a look at that piece, you feel that divine visual experience. And of course, that results from that in any way possible. And the temple, I think, combines with that as well to give an even greater sense of divinity. It's kind of like this, this secret temple with a secret uh, magic prism, you know, in the cave. And our lone subject has, of course, discovered that here. And so the artist Brian Jones actually cites uh, inspiration from the artist Amir Zand. Amir Zand is a Turkish artist who works primarily with digital illustrations. And Amir Zand does a lot, a lot of different kind of center obelisk or center prism pieces. And there's a lot of similarities there. I brought one of the pieces that Amir Zand has. This is not the one that Jones directly cites as inspiration, but you can clearly see how this massive prism uh, is inspired here as well. So there's this, this sense of scale, this sense of cosmic order, and this sense of even divinity there as well. So I think that's really important whenever we're taking a look at this piece in specificity. So we're going to jump and look at the artist's profile real quick and see if we can get some insights, maybe look at some of the artist's other work and see what we can find here. So Brian Jones has a ton of followers, you know, getting closer and closer to half a million. Absolutely incredible. Uh, congratulations, Brian, by the way. We have um, his professional concept artist worked on Cartoon Network, Universal Music, and Q Code Media. And he also runs a digital art course on Gumroad as well. And you have the link there. And whenever we're taking a look at the art, we see kind of these sci-fi inspirations, but we see these sci-fi inspirations with this cartoon aspect and kind of this surreal tone as well. We see elements of fantasy and myth, but we also see kind of like more, more playful ones as well. We see like chimeras. We see just an incredible amount of diverse art here. And that I think that's, that's absolutely incredible. Some of these just... Some of these feel kind of cartoonish or anime-ish, while others feel, you know, of course we have the mecha, so that is heavy, heavy science fiction. Ton of diverse style, ton of diverse genres here. And see, even we have kind of like a divine nature piece here as well. And of course, there's the piece that we chose here. So absolutely incredible work here. I wanted to show you guys some of Brian Jones' other art. See, this one, this one's quite incredible as well. Just absolutely amazing and so you see the amount of diverse style and that's that's really important to note because you know it's not like it's not like brian jones just recreating this over and over brian jones is hopping from fantasy to science fiction to mythology and everywhere in between and here i really see a sense of a blend of science fiction with kind of a classical temple but with also this fantasy fantasy-esque feeling of the traveler the lone traveler and of course this special magical even divine or spiritual prism here in the center spatial composition so i hope you guys enjoyed this piece go check out brian jones other work i hope we hope we learned something on you know keys of knowledge that come from the darker times in life it's really important to always keep an open eye because you're always learning lessons every single day we're always on the precipice of a new discovery and i think I think that this piece does a really good job at showing more so in a, a visual personified form what that discovery may look or feel like aesthetically. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something about contrast, learned something about really the diverse style, as well as the inspiration that came from the Turkish artist Amir Zand. Incredible, incredible piece. You know, it really brings you in. It really feels as if you have this grand sense of scale and it feels like we're discovering it as the first time. Kind of like candid viewers on the Lone Traveler there. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Check out some of Brian Jones' other pieces. And I'll see you guys on the next Apollo Art Analysis. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. 
Polar Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.